How's it going, everyone? The PlayStation Store is running its uh, Big Games Big Deal sale, um, and it's got a lot of great deals in it. We already did deals under $5, and we are back to look at some deals under $10. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of deals under $10, and we are just scratching the surface, so there's a lot of other deals to pick up if you are interested. Maybe we'll do another video. We'll see. There's been a lot of stuff to cover, and I'm kind of backed up on all the news and ongoing, and there's a lot of stuff to talk about. I need to get my take on because I know you guys care about that, but nevertheless, let's get right into it. Games under $10. Dying Light, uh, the following Enhanced Edition is 70% off for $8.99. I do think Dying Light 1 is the superior game over Dying Light 2. I do think that is the general consensus. Most people seem to believe that. I thought Dying Light 1 was awesome, and it really established Techland as one of those studios to have an eye on. Like, they established a lot of goodwill with Dying Light 1, given that they updated this game for, like, a ridiculous amount of time. Given that it was a brand new IP and Techland wasn't really established as a studio, them updating this game for, like, as long as they did, it was, like, seven years, was honestly, like, great, but also a little, like, comical to the point where I was like, damn, yo, these guys are actually giving back to their player base. Now, they did have some pain. DLC and things like that, but the following Enhanced Edition bakes in the big expansion the following. You get a great base game in there as well, $8.99. Probably a game that would be wise to play before Dying Light the Beast comes out But if you're excited for the Beast chances are you've already played this game But nine dollars for this quite good as far as that's concerned Alan Wake Remastered 67% off for $9.89 You get Alan Wake and the DLC with the Alan Wake Remaster release now Let me say I have been one of those people that I, I've been vocal about my opinion on Alan Wake too I just it just didn't resonate with me I totally get why people enjoy it and when I objectively assess every aspect of the game it does really seem like a incredibly well-made game, but I personally enjoyed Alan Wake more. Maybe it was because of the focus on Alan Wake. I don't know, but I still think Alan Wake 1 is a worthwhile playthrough. Obviously, from a technical standpoint, doesn't hold a candle to Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2 is one of the most technically impressive games of all time. Alan Wake 1 came out 14 years ago, and back then it looked visually good, but I wouldn't say it was blow away back then. But it still looks good enough in the atmosphere, the ambiance. Those elements are really well done. Narratively, it's quite strong. Again, you get the DLC content. For $9.99, I do think it's a good pickup. Next up, we got Monster Hunter World. 50% off for $9.99. Obviously, we do have the release of Monster Hunter Wilds next year, and that game is coming out a lot sooner than I expected. I was expecting that to be a summer game, but February of next year. But, you know, that game is going to come out at $70. Are you going to be wanting to pick it up for $70? That's really up to you to decide. But if you want to get into Monster Hunter, why not spend the $9.99 and get Monster Hunter World? This is a game that Capcom did a phenomenal job of keeping updated, and uh, they just rolled out so much new content that by the time they actually did release a paid expansion, like, people were down to pay the $40 for the paid expansion, and uh, it was fine. Obviously, I'm recommending the base game here, uh, but the base game is still going to offer you an absurd amount of content, and I would highly recommend recommended for this price. A couple of Assassin's Creed games. Assassin's Creed Unity is $8.99. Assassin's Creed Syndicate is $8.99 as well. Now, but to be completely transparent, I played Assassin's Creed Unity when it came out, and that's when I did my full playthrough of the game, and the game was a train wreck when it came out, like, technically speaking, and my opinion of the game obviously got swayed from that standpoint. A lot of people have come to me and told me that, brother, you gotta do another playthrough of Assassin's Creed Unity. It's actually a really good game. They ironed out a lot of the technical issues, and I do plan to do another playthrough of it at some point, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. So keep that in mind. I am recommending this on the basis that my recollection of it was fair negative, but the general, um, you know, consensus back in 2014 was generally negative around this game. I will say I loved Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and it's depressing to me that this is the game that unfortunately didn't crush it commercially, and I just think that was from the standpoint of Unity came out, and it was a technical train wreck, and there was a little bit of Assassin's Creed fatigue. As good as, as the games, I think, were... Yearly games like this for the span of like seven or eight years. Okay, people got a little bit sick of it, which I can understand. I still thought Syndicate was such a well done game. Narratively found it enjoyable. Thought the characters were likable. Uh, good traversal in the open world as well. Nine dollars for this, I think, is a really good pickup. So definitely would recommend that. Want to give a shout to Final Fantasy VII, the original, sixty percent off for six thirty nine. I'll say I still think the OG FF Seven is very much worthwhile to give a playthrough of. It's a game that obviously shows its age, but FF7 Remake is different enough where the original can exist on its own, and I like that way that Square Enix has handled this remake. I think the FF7 Remake is gonna be uh, looked back at as one of the better remake projects. Not every remake is gonna go the route of FF7, and not every game is iconic enough to do it the FF7 style, but 
the original is going to be able to exist. And it is incredibly interesting to go back and play through this game, even after you played the remake. Like, I played FF7, uh, the last I played it prior to the remake coming out was, I want to say, in 2013, the summer of 2013. And uh, I played through the remake, and then I did another playthrough of FF7 right before Rebirth came out. Like, six months before Rebirth came out, I started my playthrough of FF7. And it was just fascinating to go through it again and see how quickly you get through the section that uh, that the FF7 remake covers. It's literally like a four-hour section. Remake blows that up to a 30-40 hour JRPG. And really well done, by the way. Uh, but how FF7 is done is also really well done. I just think it's a worthwhile game to play through, especially if you enjoy the remake. I do think there's a reason to go back and check it out. I do also think that there's some people out there that might not want to spoil themselves the story, which I totally understand that as well. Uh, if you're playing the FF7 remake trilogy, by the way, and you have somehow been able to avoid spoilers... I gotta give you some credit, man. I am so terrible at avoiding spoilers. If you've been able to do that, you're like king of spoiler avoiding, but uh, credit to you. But 639 for FF7 OG, good deal on that. Darksiders Fury Collection, War and Dev, 80% off for 799. You got Darksiders 1 and 2 here. Thought this was a relevant mention, given that Darksiders 2 is gonna get a pretty nice PlayStation 5 upgrade here shortly. Kind of a random upgrade, but hey, we'll take it. Um, dual sense support, um, improved visuals, a lot of good stuff. And Darksiders itself is a really, really well done game. If you go into it expecting, you know, a fairly good action adventure game with some solid uh, platforms platforming and puzzles, I think you'll end up enjoying it. Combat's pretty good, story's pretty decent. A $7.99 for both games, I think is a really, really solid shout, so definitely would give that a pickup, especially ahead of Darksiders 2's upgrade. And remember, with an upgrade, generally speaking, you do have the price point artificially inflate um, of the existing title, so just keep that in mind. I think this pickup is really, really good, all things considered. Watch Dogs Complete Edition, 80% off for $5.99. I talked about it recently, but Watch Dogs 1 is one of those games that is really interesting for those of you guys that lived through the lead-up to the release of Watch Dogs 1. This game had an enormous, and I mean an enormous amount of hype and anticipation leading into its release. It was absolutely staggering, gargantuan, and I think a lot of people perceived it to be another Assassin's Creed level IP for Ubisoft to establish. Obviously things didn't turn out that way. However, now if you've never played Watch Dogs, I think if you go back and play Watch Dogs 1 with a leveled expectation, you can have a good time with it. I love the premise. It's so, so compelling and interesting comparatively to all the other games coming out, and it's well done in the context of an open world game. Good story as well. $5.99 for the complete edition. I do think is a really good pickup, and I would give it a recommendation. And again, you're going into it with much more tempered expectations than what we did in 2014, and I think you'll end up enjoying the game a lot more because of that. A dream, 60% off for $7.99. This is a game that I feel Sony themselves did dirty for a plethora of reasons. It was done by Media Molecule, an incredibly, incredibly talented studio that also did Little Big Planet and Mod Nation Racers, throwback to Mod Nation, but uh, Dreams was their latest project. Came out back in 2019, I want to say, in early access, and then the full release was in 2020. The game was a creation suite, an incredibly well done creation suite, and it was a game that for the less creative folk like myself, uh, you could still have an incredible experience delving into other people's experiences that they crafted. It was a really cool suite, and I just feel like Sony didn't promote it enough. I feel like at some point this is a game that should have just been bundled in with PlayStation 5s, and it should have been added to PlayStation Plus Extra, it should have been added uh, to, as a PS Plus Essential title a lot sooner than it was. It's available on Plus Extra now, but took them a while. It was after they announced that they were going to stop updating the game that they added. It's a plus extra. Figure that one out. But uh, yeah, overall, for $7.99, I do think it's a great pickup, and I would certainly give it a recommendation. Uh, if you are into more creative uh, games, you'll have a good time with that. Next up, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney Trilogy, 67% off for $9.99. A great collection of visual novels. One of the more iconic franchises I don't want to say of all time, but of the 2000s, I really do think Phoenix Wright has kind of exploded as, you know, it's a big part of meme culture, objection, all that good stuff, but as far as a visual novel series goes, incredibly compelling from a narrative standpoint, and you get three games here for 989. Now, keep in mind, 
The first Phoenix Wright game, I believe, actually was a Game Boy Advance game. It released on the Nintendo DS stateside, but that game was initially a GBA game, if memory serves me correctly, over in Japan. Um, so, obviously, they upgraded a little bit, but keep your expectations in line. Um, if you want to get into visual novels, I really do believe, like, AI the Somnium Files is the best gateway into the genre, but, you know, Phoenix Wright is a great one as well. 989 for it, I think is a great pickup. Check it out. Sakura Wars, 85% off for 8 and that This game is super crazy. Cringe. Like, you're not going to enjoy it if this is your first JRPG, but if you are a fan of corny and cringy anime dialogue, there's a lot of charm to Sakura Wars, and it's a mechanically well-made game, but the dialogue is in a way where some people are just going to absolutely detest this game. Other people are going to know what to expect of a game in this wheelhouse. I do think if you know what to expect, you know, a focus on the relationship building, you'll have an enjoyable experience out of it, but you can't be turned away by absolutely cringe anime dialogue, which is, again, a charm of the game that it's all, it's honestly, to me, almost funny, uh, but $9 for Soccer Wars, I think is a great pickup. And then lastly, DJ Max Respect, 80% off for $9.99. When the world shut down back in 2020, this was the game that I was fiending on for so many hours on end. I was playing the hell out of this on PC. Um, it is just an awesome music rhythm game and so, so enjoyable. A great uh, song selection with the base game. Obviously, with a game like this, there's an absurd amount of DLC content. And if you want everything, like, yeah, you'll have to, like, uh, you know, take out a second mortgage to buy all the content for DJ Max. But the base game offers... You know, a solid soundtrack, the presentation is great, and uh, just really, really enjoyable and addictive. Incredibly difficult at the highest difficulty, but uh, yeah, you can be a sucker like me and play it on the easiest difficulty and have a pretty easy time and work your way up to the higher difficulties. But 9 and 9 for this, I think it is great. But that'll do it for me. Again, a lot of great deals available. Links to all of these, as always, will be in the description box below. Check them out there. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. And as always, thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.